Hello and welcome back to this video where I will show you how to create another task in uh, the free Artras uh, system on this uh, STM32F746 uh, disco board. Um, we left in the last video where we had a working uh, compiling project that we could upload to the to the system um, and that's all fine and dandy when uh, when we are running the graphics, but what would, uh, but what would, it, what is needed to, to make a, to have another task running? That's uh, what this video is going to be all about. So, uh, the reason for having a real-time OS running is that we can take advantage. We only have one core on uh, on this uh, MCU, so we can only do one thing at a time. Uh, unlike a computer that has multiple cores and multiple threads, we can only do one thing at a time. So the, the uh, real-time OS uh, schedules all those tasks and see um, who has, uh, who has uh, the right to, to do some calculations right now. So usually we are only running the, the touch GFX task uh, on the processor, but um, we want to handle the hardware uh, interactions in another thread. So to speak. Um, so that's what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do today. And um, if we look through the main.cpp file here, we'll see that we have a start default task uh, function. And if I press F3, I go to the definition for this task. So what is happening when this task is is, uh, is run? We initialize the uh, file system. We initialize USB host, and then we start the graphics main task. And then we uh, enter uh, an infinite loop. But what happens inside the graphics task is that we actually enter a loop in there. So we, sh I don't think we ever get to this uh, part here. But if even if we do, we just stay uh, here forever. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a, a copy of this default task and make it our own. And uh, to do that, we go back onto the top here. And um, we start by finding this OS thread ID. Um, so all threads or all tasks, they have a unique ID. So if we ever want to shut them down, we can just uh, call that ID and ask for it to be shut down. So we start by uh, creating a, a new uh, thread ID. And I uh, press Control Shift or Control Space to, to get um, help with uh, typing this. So OS thread ID, I will call it a second task handle. So this is the, the handle that will uh, that we can get later on. And then uh, we see here that we have function prototypes. So you probably recall that in C you have uh, or C++ plus you have to have your functions defined before you can call them. And since that uh, this main.cpp file is just very, very long and have the functions stacked on top of each other, we need to define that there is a function coming later on. So we will just copy this, uh, this start default task uh, definition here and uh, we will call it the second, uh, second task like this. So this works as, as another main, if, uh, if you can see it that way. Uh, and if we go down to this one, the start default, I just press F3 again, go to the definition, so we can just copy this. Uh, and then call it a uh, second task. That's uh, what was we called in the definition. And then just delete everything in here beside the, the loop here. So now we have a, a function that when we call it, we'll just stay here in forever. Back up top, we can see here, we'll go to the, we get an error here. Um, or a note here. So that's uh, we start the main here uh, just after the function definitions. Then the main has we have the hardware abstraction layer initialization and we have the initialize or configuration of the system clock. And then we initialize all these uh, hardware peripherals. When then we initialize the graphics hardware and the graphics itself. And just after that, we have this one OS threat definition. So here we de define. Uh, a thread in the operating system and then just after that we assign our, uh, our task handle to uh, the, the OS thread that we create. So we will start by copying these two lines here and then modify them as we go. So the OS thread definition we will call this um, 
this is the, the, the name of the, the task that we're going to, to create. Uh, we can just call it second here. Um, and here, the start default task, that is the function that we call when uh, the, the thread is started. Uh, and that, um, that was the second task. That was the function that we created down at the line. What's his face? Uh, this here, 1345. Uh, let's go back up here. Yeah. So the task or the thread definition called second will uh, start the second task. The next thing is the, the priority. So all tasks has a priority. Uh, and if you're unsure what this means, we can just click on this and then press F3 to go to the definition. Uh, and then we have uh, an enum showing us the different priority types. So OS priority normal is the normal priority and we can, we can, and this is for the scheduler. So when we are switching tasks, we, it, the scheduler looks at which task is, is required the most. So of course the, the highest priority is the priority real time here. Uh, and then we have high above normal, normal below normal and low and idle. Uh, so if we go back and see at the default task here, the one that starts the graphics is is a normal one. So we just keep this as normal as well. The next number here is how many instances of this thread can exist simultaneously. So if we set this to example four, we could create four identical tasks uh, right next to each other. They should have a different ID or a different handle, but they could we could in theory have multiple identical tasks. It doesn't make sense in this system, so I'll just keep this at zero. Um, but in theory, you could have, yeah, multiple. The next thing here that is really, really important. This is the heap size. So I'm not completely familiar with these term terms, but the theory is that you have to assign a piece of memory to uh, to your task. So for example, here we can see that the, that the graphics task gets assigned four kilobytes. And what's important about this number is that this number is not in bytes, so that was wrong, it, it, it is in words. So you have to multiply this by four to get the actual size. So I know this is stupid, but we'll just grab our calculator here. 4096 4, times four is 16,384. And then we assign that to both the graphics task and the second task here, so we can multiply that by two. So this gives us, us a minimal heap size of 32,768. Remember this number because this is important. Um, if we go into our include and then go to the free RTOS config, we can see here that the minimal, uh, sorry, total heap size here is 32,768, just the same number that we just calculated. And if we don't change something here, the program will never start to run because we are using the total heap size and we have to keep the heap a little bit free. So we can do two things. Either we can increase this number to, for example, 40,000, or we can go back here and say that we don't need that much memory for that task here. So this task is just for demonstration purposes. So we can go all the way down to 128 or something like that. We'll just, just go with 512. Keep this in multiples of two just to be on the safe side. So this was the most important thing if you want to have multiple tasks to run. Uh, you have to keep the, the heap size larger than the amount of uh, stack space here that you're using. Okay, so now we have created our OS thread definition and we have been over all these um, arguments here. Now we have the the handle here, we have this uh, second task handle. Let me just write second task and then control space, second task handle, yes, here. Equals OS thread create, uh, yes, here. So, um, and we will create this, uh, we will use uh, an OS thread with the, with the name of, instead of using the default task here, well, I'm just filling in this one, I'm just copy this. 
instead here. So instead of default task here, we will use the, the this one second like this. And I can't remember what this uh, null is about, but this uh, this is uh, the same as this here. So we don't change that. <laughs> Way to go for a video. Let's try and compile this or just build it. So I built the project just before I started the video. So if we had, if something is not working, um, I had introduced that error, but everything is working. We do get uh, a warning here or a note um, saying that we cannot, uh, there is a, an error in the expansion of the macro and that's because the default task here is assigned as a char array and it should be something else. Um, so it's just a note, don't worry. Uh, let me just see here, we should have an error down here. Oh, that was just the Ethernet not being initialized. Okay, so now we have a second task and we should be running. Uh, let's see here, we just try to go to debug this. We can put a breakpoint inside our, um, our second task. Let's see, but we can also do something else in a short while. So let me just wait for the, the download. Verifying, yes. Okay, so now we are ready to run, let's go. So the, the application is running and we are just building on top of the, the working uh, prototype or project that I did in the first video. So let's go back to here to the second task and let's try it and put a breakpoint here. Yeah, we'll break immediately. So we are, we are definitely in here. But I would like to show you or be able to show you that it is actually doing something here. So I want to expand this uh, example a bit. And I want to down here in the second task. So we know it's running, right? So if I press or type BSP underscore and then control space, we have this uh, LED in it, in it. And then uh, on the 746 disco board, we have one LED, which is green one. And somewhere in all these files, it's defined as LED underscore green, like this. Okay. And in, in, the, in our infinite loop here, I'll just write a uh, thousand millisecond delay. I think it's millisecond, not completely sure about that. And then BSP underscore LED. And then we have this toggle one, LED underscore green like this okay so this won't work because uh, the bsp underscore led function here is not included so if we go all the way back to the top and then include up here include and then in the larger and less than braces here uh stm32 and then control uh, space again we can actually search for h files here so we just take the first one the the stm32 746g discovery header file here and then we can uh, just go straight ahead yes of course we want to save we go straight ahead with a debugging so what we have done now we have in it when we start the the task we uh, we initialize the led and then every second or so we toggle the led so if this is working on your board, you should be able to see when this program is started and running, um, that the LED on the backside of the, the board is flashing around one Hertz. Let's see here, verifying, verifying and start. Yes, I have a green LED flashing and I can still interact with my touch GFX project. So now we have a working project with another task running in the, I want to say background, uh, but it's more or less simultaneously on. So, so alongside the graphics. Um, so we have this second task and of course you can name it whatever you want and you, you can do whatever you want in here and you can create new tasks. So the most important thing in this video is that you have to check the total heap size here. You cannot assign um, tasks with a, with a larger number um, than the total heap size. Uh, where do we have it here? So this one here. 
So remember that you have to multiply this by four to get it in words, and then you have to combine all your thread definitions, and then you should be able to, to calculate how much uh, heat you have to uh, have in your free Archer's config. So of course you can increase this value as well if you need it. Um, I don't have any rule of thumb for calculating this, but keep this in mind. So if you if you set set this value to the same uh, as 4096, you will get a total requirement that is the same size as the total heap size, and that is not okay. So you have to stay below this. All right? Great. Thanks for watching.